Water is finite. Water is essential to all of us. Water is uh, unfortunately considered a commercial good and we are struggling between investors who want to make a profit from water and the needs of communities who depend on that water not only for their use but for the use, you know, seven generations out and producing food and all of these other things. So for so many reasons, uh, water extraction is a very concerning process. And um, anyone who knows me in my professional career knows I have been absolutely dead set against water extraction schemes. What's a nice girl like you doing with a water bottling plant, right? <laughs>to Fanny Bay in 2021 and I was very surprised to find when I chose this lovely little house that attached to it was a small water bottle plant. It wasn't part of the discussions, it wasn't part of the negotiations, it wasn't part of the, you know, it just, it was there. And um, when I became aware of it, I thought, water plant, oh my God, we'll, we'll, we'll turn it into something else, make a nice garage. And. Uh, then when I came over here and I talked to um, Ken Giles and his uh, partner Lorena who had run this little water plant for, the, for 20 years, they um, were saying how there were people in Denman and Hornby who had been relying on this water for years because they didn't have water and new to the area I wasn't all that aware of, of the water resources individual households had and I, I thought well I wonder if there's a way, I wonder if there's a way to do it right. What would doing it right look like? I'm a professional agrologist, resource economist, a policy wonk. My wheelhouse is government regulation and the effect of private sector performance. I have been a journalist for 20 years, writing opinion columns in support of uh, Canada's farmers and supply management systems. And uh, I was fortunate enough to take a second master's in Co in cooperatives. I thought, here, I've got this degree in co-ops. What am I doing with it? <laughs> so I went down that rabbit hole for a while and uh, coming back up, we have formed a water bottling cooperative. There's all sorts of people, you know, oh, all I have to do is stick a straw on the ground and pull up some water and I can make some money. And there's a lot of licenses that are going forward. So what does the provincial government do with that? How do they decide is this one okay, is this one not okay? I thought, wouldn't it be cool if there was this tiny perfect model that the government could point to and say, well, you know, here's an example of something we do like. Here's an example of a, of a water extraction, which is looking at the health of the aquifer. It's looking at the health of the ecosystem. It's considering and working with the, the neighbors. It's, it's engaged with the local water stewardship. Uh, it's going to be like a little experimental farm for the aquifer. We're going to put in uh, some um, sensors down one of the uh, wellheads to monitor groundwater, the groundwater resource, to gain a lot of understanding of the health of the water uh, beneath us and the uh, ecosystem, the fish, the environment, all of that has a priority rights as far as the co-op is concerned to the water. So we will be making sure through this monitoring process that we are not exceeding the capacity of the aquifer or doing any damage to any of the users of that aquifer. And it's, and it's not doing it for a profit, it's doing it for basically social capital community good. Capitalism is just rapacious and it will go and go and go until the resource runs out and then we'll go and do something else. But co-ops are there for the long term, co-ops are there for the people, co-ops are there for the community. Humans are at the center of co-ops and profit is at the center of capitalism. Only more pressure is going to be placed on regulatory authorities to allow water extraction as water becomes more and more scarce and, you know, it's, it's like air, right? We need it. In my mind, it's sort of like the community well. If we have a lot of water going under this property and there are people who need water and we can make it available to them at what I call a social capital price and not do any damage to the ecosystem, to the neighbor's wells, to all of that sort of stuff, um, why not? You know, they're really the organizational form of the, of the future. Um, we just have to get there. Um, you are uh, equal in a co-op. You make decisions uh, collectively as a co-op. You, uh, you, you share ideas and values and opinions. 
the people on the floor are the ones that are making the decisions, not somebody off in a, in a high office somewhere in another province that's making decisions on how that work is going to be organized and the value of that work and how those people are going to be treated.